In this lesson, we begin looking at data security controls by exploring the various security frameworks available and how to use them. Organizations should use controls to reduce and manage risk at reasonable levels, acceptable to management. This includes ensuring the costs of the controls do not exceed the cost of the risks. Each organization should adopt one of the security frameworks available from various sources. Using a framework ensures that the same approach, one that follows best practices, is used to provide security across all organizational elements. Frameworks also help security teams to efficiently use existing resources and security budget dollars where they're needed most. Finally, frameworks help security teams and managers to create metrics to measure the effectiveness of implemented controls. Frameworks help to manage risk by providing best practices for identifying, detecting, responding, and recovering from cyber attacks. They also help prevent those attacks from happening in the first place. The ISO 27001, 27002, and 27018 are a family of international standards that formalize risk management across people, processes, and technology. The standards are available for a fee. The U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST, creates standards for use by federal agencies. They are also freely available to all organizations. NIST Special Publications 800-53 and 800-53A supported by NIST SP 800-37, provide guidance for incident response, access controls, disaster recovery, and general business continuity. The Center for Strategic and International Studies, or CSIS, provides guidance for implementing 20 critical controls. The CSIS considers these controls as the minimum needed to effectively manage risk. All 20 are technical controls that focus on high-risk cyber attacks. They are a subset of NIST framework controls. This set of controls is a good start for new networks, for protection during initial risk assessments, and full security control implementation. ISACA's COBIT is a business framework for the governance and management of enterprise IT. It's used as the standard for third-party audits by the major accounting firms. COBIT provides detailed guidance over four domains, plan and organize, acquire and implement, delivery and support, and monitor and evaluate. If your organization is subject to Sarbanes-Oxley audits, you are very likely to be audited in accordance with the COBIT framework. The U.S. Federal Information Security Monitorization Act, or FISMA, provides the Department of Homeland Security with the authority to administer information security policies for federal agencies. Policies are based on the FIPS 200 and the listed NIST special publications. Any organization that provides or manages information resources to the U.S. government should be aware of and compliant with FISMA policies and procedures. COSO, the Committee of Sponsoring Organizations of the Treadway Commission, emerged from financial industry efforts. It provides guidance for integrating risk management and business operation across five components. Governance and culture, strategy and objective setting, performance, review and revision, and information communication and reporting. FedRAMP is a U.S. government program that provides standardized approaches to security assessments, authorization, and cloud product and service monitoring. The U.S. Department of Defense Instruction 8510.01 is a risk management framework that applies to all DOD information technology. The Australian Government Information Security Manual is intended for use by specified government agencies. It provides standards and guidelines for the risk-based application of information security controls. 
The Australian government also encourages all other agencies and commercial organizations to also follow the ISM. This is similar to the U.S. government recommending that all public and private agencies use NIST and other government standards and guidelines for information security. The Information and Communication Technology Cybersecurity Certification was developed by the EU Commission. It provides a certification framework intended to establish acceptable levels of trust for products and services crucial for the digital marketplace. It relies on integration with multiple international standards. Released in 2018, the NIST Cybersecurity Framework is likely the most widely used. It is a collaboration between industry and government that enables an organization to develop a security program around standards, guidelines, and practices. Documents and tools for implementation can be found at the link shown. Well, that's it for this lesson. If you have questions, please ask. And until next time, be careful what you click.